Madeline? No. Oh, rude. Can I help you? You know you can. Pardon? Oh! I do not like having my time wasted. Stop that! Oh, don't, don't make me call the guards. Make a sound and you die. What do you want? He's in the harbor, at the long pier, most likely. We heard what happened at the parade. Charles got all nervous, said he was leaving the country. I thought he was overreacting. It's not. No! Thank you. Put us down, we rise again. You end one plot, we forge another. You try so hard, but it always ends the same. Those who know you think you mad, and this is why. Even those men you sought to save have turned their backs on you. Yet you fight. You resist. Why? Because no one else will. 
<laughs> Rough night, was it? He headed inland. Took a ferry up the Charles River. I will need passage as well. Of course. Only say the word. Why would they leave this behind? Ah, uh, long have 
we waited for you to return. You have done as we asked. You have succeeded. No. I have failed. My people are gone. Chased out by those who I thought would protect them. It is a trade. A sacrifice. And not in vain. For you have found it. This? Now you must hide it. Where none shall think to look. And then in time... In time... What once was... Shall be... Again. I do not understand. Nor need you. Only do as we ask. Then... You may do as you wish. But what of my people? You have saved this place, as was your people's purpose, and that matters most. It is not enough. It will never be enough. You strive for that which does not exist. Still, you have made a difference, and you will do so again. Remember, you must hide the amulet where none might find it. I know where the key is. Then let's go! Time to see what's inside. Not quite. We still need to get the place powered up. Find the remaining pedestals and plug in the power sources. I'm on it.
I regret not asking you to hack into the Abstergo servers while you were there. A couple of well-placed relays and we'd be swimming in information. We have everything... Hey, Desmond, didn't Subject 16's... His name was Clay. Sorry, didn't Clay say Washington was a Templar? No. He indicated that Washington came into contact with an Apple of Eden, but beyond that, it's all speculation. Furthermore, judging from the portrait referenced by Clay, the event occurred much later Hello. in Washington's life. I doubt it. I'm sure he pioneered the Animus, but they've had the technology for decades now. Plenty of other people can take his place. Cross? If we could not meet the sun's cruel embrace, perhaps we might rebuke it. Already we could generate the fields to protect us in times of strife. But these were small and simple things. To replicate them on a scale the size of a world. We lack the energy to make it so. Half the world, they said then. It is better than none at all. We tried. Again, we failed. A quarter, they asked. Even this we could not do. A sixth, an eighth, a tenth, they cried. The answer was still the same. Perhaps in time a city might be spared. But it was time we did not have. So we moved on. Wonder what's inside. Only one way to find out.
Is it fixed? Immutable? Certain in its existence and only awaiting discovery? Or might it be changed? Here we learned the answer and thought that it might save us. They were used to command, to control, to own. But we soon discovered another use. When enough sat in thrall and were told to believe, their thoughts took on form. What was imagined became real. If a hundred minds could wish away a wall or create a tree, what might a thousand do? Ten thousand? More? Might we change the consensus and will the threat away? We resolved to send one into the sky where it might illuminate us all. Once placed, a sentence would be uttered. Make us safe. In this way, we would change the consensus. We would save the world. But it never came to be. We sent a dozen of them skyward, but there was no way to maintain control, to direct the beam, to enthrall the world, to speak the words. Though this was strange and dangerous, what we tried next was worse. back to change the past but we could not find a way but forward we could look forward and so here we sought to see beyond ourselves and know what was to come first we watched to learn if our work would succeed but the answer was always the same so we moved on to other things but she remained, the one you call Minerva. In time, she too stopped looking, and instead began to speak. She called out across time, in the hopes that you might be saved. She hid messages where none might find them, save for you and those within this place. Fascinating. tired of it. The cryptic warnings, the threats. Just tell us what you want! But they are. We saw the Nephilim there. We seemed like grasshoppers in our own eyes and we looked the same to them. Imagine trying to explain all this to a two-year-old, to a grasshopper. When they said the will of the gods was unknowable, they meant it. Literally. I killed her, you know. I killed Lucy. It was the Apple, son. It was Juno. I saw what she was. What would happen if I let her live? I could have stopped myself. I mean, there was a force there. But I didn't have to. I chose to. Desmond. Lucy was going to betray us and take the Apple back to Abstergo. I saw the satellite launched. I saw them turn it on and then... Failed. Whatever's on the other side of that door, it benefits Juno. We need to be careful.
I'm telling you, there's something down here. Don't be daft. I don't know, maybe they were sleeping or something and we woke them. Some kind of cryogenics? Or hibernation? I mean, how do we know what the hell they were doing down here? They were working on a bunch of different solutions, but nothing worked. Just went from one to the next, and then... I don't know. They must have left at some point. After the end. I wonder what the world would be like if they'd succeeded. I'm more concerned about what it'll be like if we don't. Salvation. They found a way. Too late for them. But not for you. Sealed. To protect it. Though now it bars your way. Find the key. The past will tell. dark and cold. It would consume us. For we were flesh, and flesh is frail. Though suits and shields might offer comfort, such adornments would not suffice. Not to save us all. So we sought to change what we were. In this manner, we might thrive in a world made poisonous. It was Aita who volunteered to see if it might be done. Aita, my husband, my love. In the end, it changed him, ruined him. He was made a prisoner of the machines. The body might survive, but his mind became brittle to the touch. He begged me for release, for days, for weeks, for months. I pleaded with him to give us time to find another way. But, but there, there wasn't, wasn't one. one. Not, Not for, for him. him. Not, Not for, for us. us. of a series of electrical impulses and the body a vessel to hold these sparks but it is weak in time it decays and crumbles into dust we asked ourselves then what if it might be replaced with something stronger something better so we forged a new vessel, one that might endure. It proved easy enough to enter. But to leave, to leave required something more, something wrong. 
And so this too they abandoned. I wondered though, were they right to turn away? I regret not asking you to hack into the Abstergo servers while you were there. A couple of well-placed relays and we'd be swimming in information. We have everything we need. Yeah, except the key. We're close. How do you know? I just do. I've been poking around a bit. Did you know there are machines down here that make... Hello. Hey. This is it. We're right behind you. Moment of truth. story now of how we tried of how we failed all our hopes extinguished save one your touch a spark a spark to save the world wait do not touch the pedestal Minerva you but how you left you destroyed the device did you think there was only one what the hell is going on here? You must not free her. Free her? Juno dwells within these walls, awaiting release. I will explain. While we worked to save the world, she sought instead to conquer it. She used our machine to set her plans in motion. Divination through numbers. There is a pattern to existence. To comprehend the calculations is to tame time. This was my focus. And so I built the eye to aid us. But she turned it towards her own ends. When we discovered her treachery, we put a stop to it. And then we left. But first we called to you, that you might try again. We thought it would be safe with her gone. Now I see we were deceived. 
She survived, she endured, and then she began to work. For centuries, Tinia and I walked the world, hoping to rekindle the spark of civilization. We shared what we knew as best we could. We were not the only ones, but for all the power we wrought, still death would claim us. But before it did, I would have one last look to know if we had succeeded. That's how you're here now? I had hoped you might find this place and finish our work. But it is too late. You and the Templars have squabbled over our refuse. You have wasted centuries, and so you have lost your chance. You cannot hope to stop the end now, Desmond. Only to survive. She's lying! Only touch the pedestal and the world will be saved. Better the world burn than she be loosed upon it. Is that so? Show him then. But he will not understand. It is complicated. It is... Show me. If you heed Minerva, the sun will have its way. The ground will crack and spit fire into the skies. All the world will burn. But this does not end the world. Merely heralds its arrival. Darkness follows. Then you emerge, resolving to lay a foundation that such a tragedy does not befall the world again. You will become a symbol to those who survive. Hope, knowledge, determination. You will inspire them to rebuild, to thrive once more. And as the world heals, so too will humanity. But you are just a man, frail and mortal. You pass from the world, leaving behind only a memory, a legacy. You will be remembered first as a hero, later as a legend, and in time, as a god. It is the cruelest fate to have written words that meant well and see them made wicked and unwise. What was meant to encourage life, used instead to justify taking it. And so now you see that what was shall be again. So tell me, how is this better? She would sacrifice you, sacrifice the world, for no other reason than to deny me vindication. They will enslave your kind, Desmond. Is this not why you fight? Is this not why you came here? To ensure more than just your race's future, but its freedom? What future? What freedom? Billions dead and the whole cycle begun anew? This world has known nothing but heartache and horror since we left it. Our gift to them, and you'd see it all returned. Enough! You must not do this. Whatever Juno's planning, however terrible it might seem today, we'll find a way to stop it. But the alternative, what you want, there's no hope there. If you free her, you'll be destroyed. It will happen in an instant. There will be no pain. You mustn't! It's done, Minerva. The decision's made. Then the consequences of this mistake are yours to live and to die with. You need to go. All of you. Now. Get as far away from here as you can. Come with us! We'll find another way! There isn't time. Son. You know it's true. It's already started. I need to do this now. So go. Go!
sort of global aurora borealis. Never seen anything like this before. Eyewitnesses describe electrical storms and erratic displays of unusual weather. Residents are being asked to remain inside and wait for geological surveys are now reporting seismic activity throughout the Ring of Fire. Northeastern Canada is said to be experiencing the largest on record. Satellites and transformers are failing as the flare increases in intensity. Worldwide reports of blackouts and seems to be receding. Residual seismic and volcanic activity is being reported, but nothing approaching earlier levels. Obviously, it'll be a while before experts are able to assess the full extent of the damage caused by today's events. But it appears the worst is behind us. We'll be sure to bring you more as this story develops. It is done. The world is saved. You played your part well, Desmond. But now... Now it's time that I played mine.
If you're hungry, have extra. No, thank you. Where is everyone? Uh, gone west. Been a while since they left. Seems some fella from New York was granted the land by Congress. What? Seeing it happen more and more. Government says they don't take land that's already owned, but... Uh... <laughs> How could this have happened? We're on our own now. No more merry English parks and labor. Which means we gotta go at it ourselves. Gotta pay for it too. Selling land is quick and easy, not quite so nasty as taxes. And since some say they're what started the old war, ain't no rush to bring them back. <laughs> Clever men, these new leaders of ours. They know not to push it just yet. Too soon for taxes. Too... British. Thank you. Be safe. You lost your wit.
All right, we're up and running. This code is hacked to all hell. Nicely hacked, but hacked. The worm found three pivots before failing, so we've got those. You need to locate the remaining pivots on your own from inside. The three we've got will triangulate the rest. It's a sweet bit of hacking on my part, if I dare say. Each pivot detects the others in proximity. There should be 12 total. Everyone you find is supposed to produce a hex cipher, and that's what we're after. Once you find them all, we'll sequence the code, package the data, and Bob's your uncle. Now, don't putz around too much in revolutionary America. I know it's tempting. So I've planted two of our pivots. Not easy for my end, believe you me. But there they are. You can see those two activating a buried one. Kinda. If you drop the third one we have, the buried pivot's precise location should resolve. Then go gather the hex cipher, rinse, and repeat. If you get a chance, I'd love to see Franklin's glass harmonica in person. Just a side note. Have fun! <laughs>